hosting a big data. This is a very, very important slide. Uh, it talks about the key things that are comprising into a virtual machine. A virtual machine basically has three things. You have an image, you have the operating system disk, and then you have a data disk. Data disk is something that is discussed in the next slide. So, when you create or when you start creating a new VM, obviously you may want to use a specific template. A template will either be a Windows Server 2008-2012 template or it can be a Linux template. So the template that you use to create a virtual machine is called as an image. This template will not contain any computer specific or user specific settings. This is a blank template having the OS components, but definitely not the OS customizations onto it. So the image is a scratch or a base disk that you can think of which is used to create a VM. So you use the image, you create a VM. While the VM gets created, the image that you have gets converted, gets converted as a OS disk. So the image that you have used here, while you provision it as a virtual machine, the image gets converted as an operating system disk. And this operating system disk is something that is stored in your storage mechanism on Azure. This disk will have the OS customizations, the user customizations, and whatever applications you may want to install, that will be available onto this. So this is what is your operating system disk. This is the disk which is now ready with your OS, is now ready with your OS customizations and user applications. This is that BSD file that can be booted from or it can be mounted as a working OS. Image cannot be mounted as a working OS because it does not have the admin user, it does not have customizations. Whereas the operating system disk is something that can be mounted or booted as a working OS. So we spoke about images, we spoke about operating system disk. Now I think we will uh, we'll have to discuss in depth about the data disk also sometimes called as storage disk. So it is that disk which is used to store application specific data and not OS specific data. The way you, your machine will have a CDE drives, multiple uh, hard drives and partitions. Similarly, your virtual machine will basically have two drives by default. I'm talking from a Windows perspective. The Windows virtual machine will have a C drive which will have all the OS specific details and another drive which is a D drive which will be available again on each of the VM. And this is like a swap disk. This is like a temporary disk where your OS, your processes and your applications will use this disk as a transient or a temporary storage. If you want something to be stored permanently, for example, let's say user specific information, application specific information, you can create a new disk and attach. The way you open up a CPU, add a hard disk, configure it, create a partition. In the same way here also, what you have to do is you create a new disk virtually, attach it to a VM and assign a drive later, assign a partition later. In my demo, I'm going to demonstrate this. We are going to create a virtual machine. On the virtual machine, I'll show you what is your operating system disk, what is your temporary storage disk, there is drive D, and then we'll also see that you have a data disk which you can create and attach to an existing VM. So let's see, you know, when you create a VM, you have questions like what is the size of the VM? You know, can I have a 5 GB uh, RAM VM? Can I have a 1 terabyte disk VM? So let's see that. Uh, the capacity of the VM comes in five sizes. The sizes vary from extra small to extra large. And you can see on the screen, you have a set of predefined number of cores 
predefined memory and if you want to customize that's something which is not allowed right now you have to choose one of it so you cannot say I want a 4 CPU core machine with 3.5 GB RAM that's something which is not recommended right now you have to choose either of this you can choose extra small or in this sequence I'm up to extra large so if I choose medium virtual machine as a size I get a 2 CPU core machine with 3.5 GB RAM and for temporary storage which we spoke about in the earlier slide I get around 135 GB space for my temporary storage of my data and how many more disks can I add I can add four more data disks and each of them can range from 1 GB to max of 1 terabyte so which simply means I can have one virtual machine with a 2 core 3.5 GB RAM and then uh, apart from my base OS disk and my temporary disk I can have 4 disk of 1 terabyte each that's the max capacity I can have so that's pretty much sufficient for uh, application to host and to store data when it comes to costing or pricing you can see this we just spoke about this figures just now so let's ignore it right now let's focus uh, on this part what is the pricing right now so as I told you it's in the preview stage it's not free in the preview as well so if I choose a small virtual machine which means I have to pay 8 cents per hour so approximately if you calculate that it comes to around 58 dollars per month so that's pretty much okay. You know, I get a full phase virtual machine with no headache uh, for me to maintain that. From a hardware perspective, it's purely managed by Microsoft because they provide you the infrastructure as a service support. And then uh, when you move ahead, uh, the same VM when it is made as a general availability, uh, the rates will change. The rates will be a bit higher than what you see. As I mentioned earlier, you can see from this stage, from even from here, small, medium, large, extra large. You should not be surprised why come Windows, being Microsoft itself, why come Windows VMs are costlier than the Linux VMs, the non-Windows VMs. As I told you, these VMs also include your licensing cost 